When I saw the MDT HNT26 carbon hunting stock at the SHOT Show this year, I could not believe how lightweight it was. In this video, we're gonna get it set up with a 6.5 PRC and go hands on with it. Hey guys, Gavin Gear here from ultimatereloader.com. Here it is, the HNT26 from MDT. It just landed in the shop. And in this video, we're gonna get hands on with it. We're gonna start with an unboxing and overview. Then we're gonna get it set up with the full custom 6.5 PRC ultra lightweight barreled action that you saw me build here on the channel. We're gonna do some shooting and then we're gonna come back in the studio to do a more in-depth analysis of all of the different weight configurations. We're gonna talk about all of the features and specs and details and talk about what you can use this for. So without any further ado, let's get this baby out of the box. So of course we have our printed materials. We've got the main portion of this system, the chassis system here, which is gonna be kind of the backbone and the folder. It comes in folder config and non-folding config. And there's two different four end options. This is the full length ARCA option. There's also a standard option where you'd use something like a swivel stud. This thing is so lightweight, it's not even funny. So after getting everything out of the accessories parts box, this is everything that I got with the HNT26 as I configured it. We've got the main chassis with carbon grip and folder carbon buttstock. Again, the folder is an option. We've got the full length Arca carbon fore end. This is enclosed and again, it's available with a standard fore end without the Arca as well. We've got our printed materials. We've got our length of pull shims and we've got a full set of hardware, including two key things. It's got swivel studs, which we could add if we wanted to, and it's also got the action screw, so I don't have to mess around with adjusting the length of different action screws to get it to work just right with the Remington 700 6.5 PRC barreled action I'm gonna be installing. Okay, quick run through of the high level specs. Again, we'll go in more detail later in the video. This is built on a magnesium chassis, it's got the carbon fore end and the carbon butt stock and grip. There is the folder option. It's aimed at hunting, but I've heard of guys recently running these in an arrow hunter. You've got a very low baseline weight. You can add weights to it to get just up to the right weight to make the class that you're shooting in. Total package weight is as little as 26 ounces. Again, you have to lift this thing to believe it. You have to hold it in your hands. And the MSRP is starting at $1399.95 USD. So I'm gonna waste no time. I'm gonna get my ultra lightweight 6.5 PRC barrel to action installed in the HNT26, and then we're gonna get out and get straight to shooting. Well, I'll have to say the assembly was very straightforward and simple. I removed the barrel to action from the other carbon conventional stock that I had as a complete rifle and set it aside. Then it was time to put the barrel to action into the core chassis and the included action screws had 3 16 Allen heads on them, which I love. That's the standard Remington 700 wrench that you're gonna need, the 3 16 uh, Those both were installed finger tight. Now the barreled action is in the chassis. You can slip the fore end over and then tighten the screws. Depending on the model you have, the normal or the Arca, there's a different number of screws, but these were carefully tightened incrementally to 25 inch pounds, and then I tightened the action screws to 60 inch pounds. MDT recommends 60 to 65 inch pounds for the action screws. You wanna press rearward on the barrel to action or give it a nice tap on the bench to make sure that the recoil lug is seated against the seat. That's all there was to it. This is a very compelling package. Let's throw it on the scale to see what our, our bare bones weight is at. Now note, this is a lightweight barreled action, but I do have a carbon steel bolt here. So if we had a titanium bolt, we could get that weight down even a little bit more. We've got six pounds, 3.6 ounces with no magazine. I've got a four round mag. It's gonna work with 6.5 PRC here. Put that back on here. We're at six pounds, 8.2 ounces. So we're well under seven pounds, which is really awesome. I would also put a scope on right now and weigh it, but I do not have an ultralight scope. That's one of my goals next in the optics department is to get something like that. So 
in no time we've got a complete rifle. I am going to throw an optic on there. It's going to be a little lower on the heavier side and we're going to go out and shoot. Nice. Okay, good. So zero confirmed with the Banish 30 at seven inch config and I've got a steel gong out there at 333 yards. I've dialed up about three and a half MOA. So let's see what it's gonna take to get on target. Nice. It's always good when you can see the target. Nice. First round hit. Okay, that's kill zone all day long at 333 yards. And uh, the Skypod lightweight double pull, perfect companion for this setup. <laughs> that's really confidence inspiring, this package, man. Uh, really good stuff. So uh, why don't we mix it up with shooting position a little bit and then uh, get some variety going. So I'm gonna sit on the hillside this time and uh, we're gonna use kind of the full capability of the uh, lightweight double pull. What I want to do is get into a comfortable position where I've got kind of good rear bag support here. I've already dialed. I'm at 176 yards here. Get this. Nice. My breathing, got to get my breathing under control here. Nice. Yeah, that one's gonna take just a little bit of practice on my part, but uh, I really like this kind of sitting on the hillside. We have a lot of, of game, whether it be varmints or, or big game, that are gonna be down in the canyons around here. And uh, this double pull or our triple pull gives us the flexibility uh, to engage those kinds of targets. So that's a lot of fun. Uh, maybe we try the tripod next. And this is where the full length Arca comes in handy on the forehand. I've got my two bets QDT here. We could just lay this right down and lock it in. I like to adjust my height. I can do that by just articulating this leg here so that I'm kind of flat footed. I've got Good uh, elbow to knee contact there. That looks pretty good. Really having a lot of windage wobble here. Whew, it's a hard hit.
Whew. <laughs> now that is awesome. So I think with a little bit of practice, uh, I'm good to go there. Uh, a few practical field situations here, a few scenarios, and uh, I really like it. I like it with the seven inch config on the Banish 30 here. This is really good. Uh, what I would like to do though, is to check out some kind of more close quarters offhand action. Say, if you were, you know, within 50 yards or something like that. So uh, maybe we'll head down to the uh, industrial steel yard. Let's do it. So I, I took the bipod off and we're just gonna roll, you know, as if we were kind of lightweight hunting here. I could have a sling on here, definitely, but uh, want to get a feel for the rifle with the brake. I put the Salmon River Solutions four port titanium brake back on. It feels really good. This is a nice light config for the rifle. And uh, I just wanted to feel what this was gonna be like to shoot offhand. You know, that close quarters, Deer is 50 yards away, 75 yards away. How does the recoil feel? Be real interesting to see how this uh, brake does with this configuration. But uh, overall, so far, it, it just really feels tight. It feels uh, really good. So I'm gonna engage one of these steel targets here. We could have some POI shift here based on the fact that we've got the brake on here instead of the suppressor. So let's see what we've got. Make sure my parallax is dialed there. It's gonna be around there. Oof. That is just not bad. Really not bad at all. I could shoot this thing all day like that. That brake works really, really good. And the rifle just handles the recoil really well. So when you've got an elk killer and a lightweight config like this, backpack all day, shoot all day, I, I literally couldn't be happier. So I'm satisfied now that I've covered a lot of the basic configurations that I would encounter in situations that I would encounter hunting. And uh, next what I'm gonna focus on is making sure that we have all of the weight configurations documented really well. So I've already started that process and I'm gonna continue weighing each of the component sets, each of the individual parts, and really giving you guys an idea of how you can configure the rifle uh, for actual practical hunting and also for NRL hunter type situations since people are running these rigs. So I'm gonna do a little bit more analysis and uh, We'll do a shooting summary, talk weights. I have to say this rifle is extremely confidence inspiring from the sight in to shooting prone at 333 yards to shooting off the side of the hill back up onto the tripod and offhand down at the industrial yard simulating a close quarters you know, deer hunting situation, that kind of thing. This rifle has all those bases covered. I would have no hesitation taking this rifle to a, an NRL hunter match or to take it hunting in extreme terrain where weight is really a factor. I wanted to show you one more thing here I haven't shown you yet, and that's the folder. So there's a button over here that allows you to fold it. There's two joints and then it locks. This little button here pops up and, and locks it in place. Let's see what our folded length is. Without the break, we're gonna be at about 34 with the edge of the pistol grip. And then with the break that we have here, we're at about 36 inches overall. And then when you want to fold it back out to its normal position, you give it a good swing. That's gonna lock this button in. And that brings us up to, what is this? 44 inches with the break and about 42 and a half thereabouts uh, without a break if you're running a thread protector. And of course the suppressor is gonna add a, a good bit of weight in addition to that. So let's break down the weights. What I did was I took each of the individual components or assemblies, i.e. the optic and the rings. I 
kept together as a unit and weighed as one, one assembly. And, and then I sorted things from light to heavy. So we can kind of mix and match the different weight configurations depending on how you would want to set up a rifle. The brake came in at 1.3 ounces. The magazine was 4.5 ounces. The Banish 30 is 9 ounces in its 7 inch configuration and 13 ounces in its uh, 9 inch configuration. Have a dedicated video that you're going to want to check out on that. We even go into recoil analysis with our recoil rig. Really interesting stuff. So the Vortex Viper 4 to 16 by 50 with the rings was 25 ounces. This is one of those areas where I think additional weight savings could be had, but really this is a fairly lightweight optic compared to some of my, you know, 6 to 24 by 50 options and things uh, in that category. The chassis is 31 ounces and the barreled action comes in at 67.2 ounces. A slightly thinner profile barrel and a titanium bolt could get that weight down further, but I feel like this is a good kind of baseline uh, way to represent the weights of a typical lightweight run hunting rifle. And if you look at the graph there, you can see visually just how, how these weights vary. So I wanted to put together a few configurations I would run. So the complete rifle minus the mag, optic, and brake. Obviously, you're not going to run it without a magazine, but this is the bare minimum weight would be 6.14 pounds and 98.2 ounces respectively. If we add the magazine and the brake without ammunition, we're at 7.78 pounds and 124.5 ounces respectively. Uh, the complete rifle with mag, optic, and suppressor in place of the brake is 8.54 pounds or 136.7 ounces. Now you might have seen recently here on the channel I did a review of Bergara's MG Light in 6.5 Creedmoor. I thought it'd be interesting to compare those two because that's a really lightweight rifle as well. Well, I put it on the scale without the mag and it came in at 6.85 pounds compared to the 6.14 pounds here for this particular rifle. So that's 0.71 pounds heavier, a fairly big difference. Okay, now what if we compared this ultralight rifle with some other popular rifle configurations? So we're at 6.1 pounds for this rifle, if we consider that 100%, and we went up to a standard wood stocked rifle with a sporter profile chromoly steel barrel like a Remington 700 CDL, it's gonna be in the eight pound range or 30% heavier. And then stepping up to a sort of hybrid rifle, the HMR's the hunting and match rifle from Bergara, the, the B14. Uh, this one is gonna be 9.9 .9 pounds, and that's about 61% more weight, or 161% of the weight of this particular rifle. And when you talk about adding a pound, or three pounds, or four pounds, that weight really adds up once you start going nearly vertical up one of the crazy hills uh, around here. And you can see here the, the bar chart stacks those weights next to each other. Now these are approximate weights. There's gonna be a bunch of different options that can affect what your rifle weighs. Uh, the Bergara B14 HMR and this ultra lightweight both have detachable box magazines. The Remington 700 CDL does not. Uh, and there are just a ton of different things that can impact that weight. But this gives you a ballpark idea of kind of how some of these different types of rifles are, are gonna come in against each other. Okay, some more specifications. We went through kind of the high level. Uh, MDT has done a really interesting thing with this kind of recoil absorbing foam filler on the buttstock. Now, I'd kind of like to throw this on a recoil rig to, to see what that would do, but I don't really have a good uh, apples to apples comparison uh, without the foam filled buttstock. So I'm gonna have to sort of capture that as a possible future idea. Uh, there's the snag free design. You'll notice there's a lot of smooth contours here. Uh, <laughs> I have <laughs> hunted with a Ruger Precision Rifle before. I would not recommend it. And let me tell you, in the, in the sticks and branches and bushes, it snagged on just about everything. In fact, one time when I was out, I lost half the buttstock. It has the adjustable length of pull. Well, it just adjusted itself right off, off the rifle. I had to steal one off of another uh, RPR that I had at the time. So the snag-free design is a, a really good feature. This uh, low-profile mag catch is going to be a very familiar ergonomic if you're used to running a PRS type rifle or other competition rig, 
And I like how MDT has incorporated that into a hunting chassis. Really, really good stuff. Uh, adjustable uh, foam cheek riser. It's nice and comfortable. It's not going to be bitter cold if you're in sub-zero temperatures. Something that some fair weather you know, match competitors don't think about with hunting is it gets really, really cold. Negative 20, negative 30, negative 40 up in Alaska. Uh, little details like that kind of go a long way. Uh, love the AICS magazine compatibility. I just stole this magazine from one of my other 6.5 PRC rifles and it clicked right in. Works great. Also, this chassis is available in cobalt green Cerakote, which if you've seen a picture of that or know, know that color, it's really attractive and I think it's a great tone, on, tone to, to go against the, the gray and black carbon fiber look. And another thing that I particularly like is just this grip. This carbon grip, I have larger hands and you notice there's kind of a swell on both sides. It just, to me, feels really, really good and solid. It doesn't feel thin and wimpy like uh, if you're holding on to you know, a 1911 or something like that can. Uh, I don't like thin grips, especially single action uh, revolvers, <laughs> the uh, single action army kind of stuff. Um, so that gives you an idea of some more of the, the features. Uh, I have a detailed list of inlets that are supported. This is the Remington 700 short action. So I'm kind of pushing the limits with uh, the 6.5 PRC here in terms of Magnum performance in a short action. You know, 300 WSM would be particularly interesting to look at as well, I would say. Uh, overall, again, very confidence inspiring. I'm, I'm really looking forward to more good times shooting this rifle in the field. I could see it being a great varmeter. I'm going to try different barreled actions. I have a lot of follow up uh, adventures really to have with this particular rifle. Here's what I want to know from you is what lightweight hunting rig are you running? And do you have your eyes on an HNT 26? Are you competing in NRL Hunter with one of these chassis systems? Tell us all about it. What cartridge, what chassis, what configuration? Did you go for the conventional fore end or the full length Arca rail? Tell us all about it. Drop a comment and we'll start a discussion. That concludes this video. And that means it's time to wrap it up. I hope you liked this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Also, make your voice heard. If you have something to say, please drop a comment. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications because you're not gonna wanna miss the awesome content that is coming up. And finally, flex your reloading pride. You could look great in one of these t-shirts. We've got multiple designs at the Ultimate Reloader store. I'll see you later because I'm off to go shooting.